Hello, design lovers. I'm Ashley Childers, and today I cannot wait to share with you a few of my very favorite fall decor DIYs, including a gorgeous fall wreath made out of dried naturals, a stunning fall tablescape, including one of my very favorite DIY napkin details, and a fun little craft project, including dried oranges and cinnamon sticks that can take you all the way through to the holiday season. I know you're going to love today's video, so be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can get more weekly design goodness as we drop a new video every weekend. Okay, guys, let's get started on our first DIY of the day for fall decor, and that is this beautiful dried naturals wreath. I made this one up so I could show you guys an example, and this is what we're making today. So I wanted you to get a visual of what we're doing. So in order to create this wreath, first of all, I used all dried leaves and dried natural fall um, stems that I purchased at our local craft store. You can get these online, you can get them locally, however you want to get your fall stems. I keep mine from year to year, so I actually have like a big selection. And I put them all out so that I could pull from them as I was creating the wreath to see what color palette I wanted to land on. So when we start our wreath, we're going to start with this base wreath of grapevine. I love grapevine for fall. Um, I just think it's so beautiful and whimsical looking. So this is the, the base. That goes down. And then in order to kind of get this wispy quality, I added in this grapevine. And this is just a little grapevine wreath that I bought at the craft store. And what you can do when you purchase these little wreaths, there is this, it might be hard to see, but there's this this little piece of grapevine that kind of keeps all of it wrapped together. If you just clip that, this is a pro tip, I do this all the time and I use, I use grapevine um, in fall decor and I also use it in our, last year I wove it into our Christmas tree and it was really pretty. So um, this is a fun little tip, an easy and inexpensive way to just add a whimsical quality to your wreaths or garlands or whatever. So we're gonna keep unwrapping that. So now that I've taken that grapevine spiral wrapping off of this little wreath, look what I can do. I can just pull all these pieces apart and it creates almost like a little grapevine garland. And I, I just think it's so pretty. So what I wanna do with this is just kind of work this into the grapevine base wreath and get it kind of, I like it to be asymmetrical. I think it just looks I just like the way it looks. Um, I like my wreaths to be a little bit whimsical, a little bit asymmetrical, and look very natural. Like they um, were just created, you know, with the natural, beautiful dried florals. So that really is what I'm going to go for. Let me show you guys what that looks like. That took like three seconds to work that grapevine in. And I've just secured it like with the little grapevine stems that, that splay out from this wreath. Now that we've worked our little grapevine garland throughout the wreath, we are going to start putting in some of our dried leaves and dried naturals. And pro tip on this, you're going to want to wear gloves. Um, I have made the mistake before of doing this without gloves on. And a lot of times the dried naturals are dyed in order to retain the color. So it will stain your, fingers <laughs> and I've had like burgundy fingers for three days because I forgot to put gloves on. So put gloves on when you are doing this or working with dried naturals. So I am going to start with this base layer of this little orange kind of burnt spray. And this, I, when I was creating the, um, the wreath yesterday and working on this, it took me a little bit of time to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. I played around with it. So make sure that you give yourself some grace when you are creating a wreath and play around with it and give yourself some time. It doesn't have to be rushed. It's supposed to be fun. Yours is not gonna look exactly like mine, which is totally okay. They all need to be different. Um, we're just gonna work these in. And another thing I like about these grapevine wreaths is I don't ever use any hot glue or anything like that. You could 
to secure the little stems into the wreath, but it's wrapped in wire so you can just like tuck these little babies down into it and find a little spot and it just stays and you don't have to put any hot glue on it or anything like that. Um, Cause sometimes that's hard to, to disguise when you have hot glue on a, on a wreath like this, especially if it's wispy. So we're just gonna keep working those in all the way around the wreath. Okay, so I have finished putting in the little wispy base of the wreath and I wanna show you what that looks like. So that just gives us some color as a background and I like that it is wispy and it kind of just starbursts out in the same shape as the wreath. The next thing that I'm going to add in are these beautiful burgundy dried leaves. And we're going to just also kind of create that circular splayed out design with these. But I like these to look a little bit more asymmetrical and some of the pieces to be shorter and some of them to be longer. So you will see what I mean right now. Okay, so I have finished adding the dried burgundy leaves and I want to show you what that looks like. So as you can see, I've used varying colors of burgundy and then they're kind of coming out in an asymmetrical pattern, which I absolutely love. The very last thing that we're going to add to our DIY fall wreath is these sweet little sable colored plumes, which I think are so fun and wispy. And then these adorable dried flowers in this fun little wheat color. And I love adding elements like this because they both have a really stiff stem. And so we can, you know, tuck some in shorter, have some coming out a lot longer, and it just adds a fun little whimsical quality to the wreath. Okay, we have almost finished up this wreath. I'm putting in this last little dried flower and voila, it's finished. I absolutely love it. I think it's really pretty and something like this can take us all the way through to Thanksgiving. Now, the last and final touch is to add a beautiful ribbon. I love hanging my wreaths by a ribbon, um, even if it's decorative. And I found this really gorgeous eyelash fringe velvet ribbon at the local craft store. And it's literally the perfect color for this wreath. So I'm going to add that. We're going to hang it on the door and it will be there all the way through Thanksgiving. We have moved into my dining room and I want to talk about how to create a really beautiful, sophisticated fall tablescape. So I, when thinking about creating this fall tablescape, wanted to design something that I felt was could take me from early fall all the way through to Thanksgiving. So I pulled in beautiful fall colors with this gorgeous flax, deep brown, and then some pops of kind of muted black, black place settings as well. And then I've got this really unique um, flatware set that I've used that is gorgeous bronze. I also added in some fun glassware in the tablescape as well, and I love how it brings a little bit of sparkle to the table. So let's talk through how I created this and how you can replicate the look in your home. The first thing I did to create the tablescape was to lay down a base layer. And I did that with this really beautiful nubby linen table runner. This is a gorgeous flax color and it's a color that honestly is seasonless, but I love how it pops against the dark burl wood of my dining table. The next thing that I did was create a focal point with this dried floral arrangement and this kind of deep brown burgundy color of the plumes is absolutely the perfect pop that I needed to tie in with some of the vintage ceramic pieces that I have. The next thing I did was add these alabaster candlesticks. These are the Ridge candlesticks from my collection. And I love how that dark kind of black alabaster brings an element of 
artfulness to this table. You know, I love to add in natural stone when I can. So I wanted to make sure to bring those onto the tablescape as well. And then just finished them off with these beautiful little pillar candles. And they're the perfect color to tie in to the flax linen table runner. Next, I added in this unique vintage set of bowls and little, um, you could use these honestly at, for a lot of different things, sake or maybe a fall gazpacho, anything, but I just love how they're handmade, they have a really beautiful texture, and all of the colors in my tablescape are in this glaze of these little fun pieces. I had a few extras of these uh, little ceramic bowls, so I scattered them throughout the table runner and then just popped in these little votive candles and that will just bring another level of ambiance and light to the tablescape. I finished off the tablescape with these sexy black, kind of speckled glazed plates. And then of course, like I said earlier, added in my set of vintage flatware. The color is perfect for this entire tablescape. The last thing was to add this beautiful uh, glassware. I added the decanter and then these small little glasses and then our napkins. And I want to just show you what I did with these napkins. You can mix this up and use these little pocket napkins a couple of different ways. You can add in the little dried plumes like I did or a little sprig of holly for Christmas if you wanted to, or even nest in your fork and knife. It's just a fun little detail that looks very put together and chic, but adds a little bit of interest to the tablescape. Let's talk through how to make the simple little pocket napkin. This is so easy. You're going to want to take your napkin and lay it front side down onto the table. Then what I like to do is take the top part of it, fold it down, kind of about, mm, about a fifth of the way down the napkin. Then take the bottom section and fold it up where the little hem crosses over the top. Then just take your napkin, flip it over, and fold it up. And there you go. You've created your little pocket napkin. So easy. And let me show you what I can do with this. So I've got the little pocket now. You can take little fall sprigs or leaves or whatever you want to do and just kind of nestle them down into the little pocket. Look how cute that is. Or if you don't want to go that route, then you could just as easily take your knife and your fork and nestle them down into the pocket as well. And I just think that's a fun little look, very kind of timeless and classic. And then you could just sit that exact thing right on top of your plate. Now that we have finished our gorgeous fall tablescape, let's go back into my kitchen for our final DIY of the day. And that is our dried orange and cinnamon stick garland. For our very last fall decor DIY project, I wanted to show you how to make a really beautiful dried orange and cinnamon stick garland. I think this is just such a fun project. You could get your kids involved and it once again can take you from early fall, which is right now all the way through to Thanksgiving, honestly, even into Christmas. I love to use dried oranges in my Christmas decor as well. So the very first thing that we want to do for this project is to create our dried orange slices. And this is so easy, guys. This is like the most simple DIY ever. So get you some, um, actually, I think these are nectarines. I picked them up yesterday at the store. I like to use a little bit of a smaller orange or nectarine, and I like to have that deep orange color. It just turns out better when you bake them. So you're going to want to slice your oranges or nectarines into about quarter inch slices, and then pat them off. They are going to be really juicy, obviously, so we want to get as much liquid out of the oranges as we can before we put them into the oven. So we've got our oranges sliced, and as you can see, I'm just patting them off to get all of that excess liquid out of them, and then putting them on a baking sheet 
lined with parchment paper. It makes it a lot easier and it's not a messy cleanup. So we're going to line this entire baking sheet with our sliced oranges. I've got the oven preheating at 200 degrees. You want it really low. And we are going to bake these orange slices for four hours. And I like every hour for the four hours to flip them. It's so easy, you can do it in an afternoon, but they turn out really beautiful and um, consistent in color if you flip them every hour for the four hours baking. So now we've got our baked orange slices. And I'm going to show you the easiest way to put holes in your orange slices, and that is with an olive pick. This makes it so super easy. You don't have to worry about cutting yourself with a knife. Just lay your dried slice down on a cutting board and take your little olive pick and literally just poke it through and twist it. And then you're going to get the perfect little holes that you need in order to thread your orange slices on the ribbon. Okay, so I've got my dried orange slices with my little holes poked in them and then my cinnamon sticks. And I, the cinnamon sticks that I picked up at the store were like super long. So I just cut them down because I wanted them to be different lengths for this little project. So we've got all that ready to go. And then I've got this fun, um, satin ribbon with this little eyelash detail on the edge, which I think is just so cute. And what you're going to want to do with your ribbon, this is a three, I think it's three yards. Um, and I just wanted the extra to play around with. So loop it and double it up like that. And then we're going to make an initial knot at the top. And that is going to be our little loop that our garland hangs from. Just like that. The next thing that we're going to do is add in our very first cinnamon stick to start. I'm going to start with a cinnamon stick and then alternate cinnamon stick, then dried orange slice all the way down and then end the garland in a little dried orange slice. Before I add my very first orange slice, I wanted to show you what it looks like adding the first cinnamon stick and here it is. I just made a simple loop with the doubled up ribbon, just slid the cinnamon stick in there and tightened it up and it's perfect. So now it's time to add my first orange slice. Okay, so I've laced on the very first orange slice and I wanna show you how I did that. Because I put two holes in to the orange slices, I took the front ribbon and threaded it through the front side of the orange into the top hole. It goes along the back and then comes out the bottom hole of the orange slice. And then I left that second ribbon behind it to kind of give it a little bit of weight and see this is exactly, exactly how I wanted it to turn out. So I'm going to keep layering the cinnamon sticks and the oranges on until we create the entire garland. Okay guys, who is ready to get your fall DIY on? I know that today got me in the fall spirit for sure. Now I want you to let me know in the comments which one of my DIYs from today's video was your favorite and what you plan to create in your home this season. Now, if you love all things design, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Ashley Children's Home so you can get a little sneak peek into my daily design adventures. And if you want more design goodness right now, you're going to wanna to watch this playlist next. As always, I'm Ashley Childers. Thanks for watching and remember, good design is for everyone. So create a home that inspires you. Have fun DIYing this fall and fall in love with where you live one room at a time.